everybody, it is a hair up glasses day. Uh, it's, you know, it's been, it's been pretty crazy, uh, especially this weekend. This was a, a nuts weekend. Um, and I'm glad that some of you pointed out that it was a good idea that I had to wait to report on the Jonathan Major situation, but it is far from resolved. We have quite the tea stream today. It's all Disney, all Disney, all day long. Um, uh, and Disney, you know, Bob Iger certainly finds himself in a, in a storm, a swirling storm. Uh, and he's just got two years and then he's going to, you know, he's going to see what he can do. He can, he's going to see what he can do. Uh, I don't know if it's fixable. I'm continue to be shocked at the level of damage that Bob Chapik was able to cause. But then again, at the same time, you know, Bob Iger did hire him. Uh, Dancing Dog 60, thank you for gifting five memberships. Hey, Daniel, thanks for joining. Uh, when we, as we start with the stories, please keep in mind that uh, wait until the Q, there's a Q&A for each section at the end of it, and then at the very end, there's a Q&A where you can ask me anything that you would want. If you put a comment in there beforehand, I might not be able to get to it. Thanks, Kevin. Um, just, just, just being real there, man. Just being real. Uh, and of, of course, especially if it's not on topic. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Uh, and uh, let's get started. Did Secret Invasion get a date for June 21st? Harry, did that just come out? Hey, Jakey. Uh, I have not seen that, but if so, that would be, uh, that would be, that would be great. I'm very excited for that show. Uh, oh, yes. DJM, thank you for reminding me. Have you seen Kit Connors' new pictures of him in the gym? Says it's for Heartstopper, but I have my fingers crossed it's for Hulkling. I checked. I asked. Uh, it seems that he has met with Marvel, but he does not have a deal yet. Um, you know, nothing's happening. Uh, but, you know, he is on their radar. I, I mean, of course. They hired his co-star. Let's see what they decide to do. Uh, but I think it doesn't hurt for any roles. You know, if he wants to jump to movies... Um, you know, I think that having the, being ready to go, uh, I think certainly would help him. So for, for anything that he might want to do. Uh, hey, Jason Ratner. I mean, I think there's some commentary there as to about, uh, you know, um, you know, body image, body image questions for guys. Uh, you know, is that what, you know, do you need that to be a leading man today? I think, I think that's, you know, those are interesting questions. I don't know how I would feel about that. Uh, just like we worry about body for so long, it's been a question about women, but now it's starting to move over to actresses. But, you know, I think at the end of the day, you know, Kid O'Connor can say, hey, I, I just want to work. So I don't really, you know, he doesn't really care what the issue is. I mean, look what it did for, uh, yeah, Kumail Nanjani uh, says, I don't care, Bear. And then look how Chris, Chris Pratt was able to just completely reinvent his career because he went to the gym. Uh, so I think it doesn't hurt. So, uh, yeah, you guys are also mentioning uh, Chris Pratt. Uh, Joseph says, Secret Invasion. Well, is it confirmed for June 21st or not? If it is, phenomenal. Although that's a very long time between uh, Disney Plus, Star Wars, Marvel shows. Uh, I hope they change that 3 a.m. Uh, time. Uh, all right, so let's see here. Let's, ho let's talk about, let's get into the stories. Hey, Jesse. All right, so story number one. Hold on. Sad boop, sad boop, sad boop. Everybody was very shocked to see this story about Jonathan Major's break on Saturday night. Now, some of you might not be familiar with this story. Yes, yeah, Saturday was crazy, Josh loves movies. First, we were talking about Lady Gaga. I was like, Saturday's my one day off. And I was like, there goes that. Uh, so then, then at the end of the day, this Jonathan Major's story broke, right as I was posting that video. But I was like, this is a very serious situation. You're talking about a man's career and very serious allegations. So I was like, you know, he says there's more to the story. I'll give him till Monday to talk about it. And he did, him and his, his lawyer did add more information. But yet, just to give you a little bit of a um, upfront, just so you understand what's going on, the district attorney in New York charged him this morning anyway. For all, so all the stuff that his lawyer put out on Sunday, uh, he's still been charged. Uh, and, you know, his lawyer said they were going to get the charges dropped, but, you know, they couldn't stop him from being put forward. And that's very bad. You know, and it's, it's a very crazy situation. I'm sure Marvel is being very careful. But, you know, Saturday, it looked really bad. Sunday, I thought maybe it was, it was what he said and that there was more to the story. Then this morning, I see that they charged, the district attorney charged him anyway. 
and that makes me nervous again. So let me walk you through the timeline, uh, for those, especially for those of you who aren't on Twitter, where this played out, uh, both Jonathan Majors and King. And that's true, Dane O'Leary. You know, this is particularly crazy because, first of all, I think the reason people reacted so strongly to it for a couple of reasons. It was like a perfect storm. The first is that Jonathan Majors seems, has seemed like a really kind person. Now, that's not to say that might not be the case. That's, we've seen that happen. But he seems incredibly kind. He goes out of his way to sign. I saw clips of him going out of his way to sign autographs, being very kind to everybody. I saw him, I'm sure you might have seen on, a, on, a, on the Sundance red carpet for uh, Magazine Dreams, there was a, a reporter, uh, and I think it was like an LGBT trans reporter who of color, and they were trying to you know, keep him from doing the interview because they had run out of time, and Jonathan Majors insisted on doing it, which seemed very kind. Uh, I saw footage of him talking to his uh, high school drama teacher and breaking down into tears. I mean, he just seems like a very kind person. So that it was very surprising to think that this might be the case. Then, of course, uh, he is on the cusp of a huge career, not only with Kang and being the focus, the big new Thanos of um, the MCU, but then also, of course, Magazine Dreams. Like, it had seemed very much like he was on his way to an Oscar. So you're like, oh my gosh, he hadn't even gotten started, and it looks like his career might be over. All right, so on Saturday, late in the morning on Saturday, he was arrested for uh, domestic abuse. Uh, and the story hit the trades. TMZ, TMZ has uh, particularly good contacts in law enforcement and in the legal system because of uh, the founder, Harvey, I believe he used to be a lawyer. So that's how they're able to get really incredible information so quickly. So they broke this story, caught on like wildfire in the evening, and his lawyers and his team quickly said, you don't know the whole story, he's going to be exonerated, we're sure of it. Uh, but then also at the same time, two Twitter accounts came forward, um, you know, not particularly well-known individuals, but it seemed like there was no reason, they didn't seem to have any reason that you wouldn't you would doubt them. And we've seen other anonymous things play out. You know, the Army Hammer situation, for instance, turned out to be true. Army Hammer was going around doing crazy stuff with someone he'd never met that he'd met online. And you're like, that seems like a huge liability, Army. And it was. So, and, you know, and one person had said, one of the, and they, I believe last I checked, they had closed their account off. But they had said that he had a bad reputation all the way back to Yale, which was weird. You know, a lot of us on Saturday night, and some of you wrote this to me, tweeted, DM'd me, and I was wondering it myself, is like, why would you vet your actors? Why at this point, after all we've been through at this point, is talent not being vetted? And I can understand that would be expensive, but think how expensive this is. So I would think that maybe one example would be like, can you get recommendation letters to get an agent? You know, can you get somebody who, can his Yale professors write him a letter? You know, you know, I believe someone said Jonathan Major said he was rising so quickly he felt someone was going to try and take him out. And you get, you know, it's, I mean, like, it's a very difficult situation. Asham, vetted means you go in there and you see, is there anything that's going to be a liability down the line? Like, like all the, well, those, so those tweets, so what you would do is you'd have to dive into someone's social media, you'd have to dive into their background. And, you know, everybody makes mistakes. I'm not calling this a mistake under any circumstances. But, you know, I'm not saying if you ever did something, you know, like, you know small, you know, it, you know, but, I mean, the studio needs to know what they're getting into. And the studio needs to understand what could potentially come down the pipeline. Because these were very serious accusations against Jonathan Majors. And what was even more shocking was that they were said to be well known by people in the community, in the theater community. And that's weird because, you know, Michael B. Jordan could not have vetted more for this guy. A lot of people have vetted very hard for Jonathan Majors. He has gotten a lot of really great gigs with really strong talent and really strong places. And I, you know, I've never heard anything about him. That's not to say, again, that that's not necessarily the case. But, you know, no one in Hollywood had heard anything. So this was back from his theater days, apparently. So it was looking real bad on Saturday night. Then on Sunday, his lawyer stepped forward and said, I, we have footage from the car in question. The driver is willing to make a statement that he didn't do anything wrong. And his girlfriend, who accused him, has now recanted in writing and has, in fact, check, checked herself into a, a hospital because she's having an emotional breakdown. 
So you're like, whoa, that seems really bad. And then also early this morning, ABC, one of you tweeted this to me and I checked it out. It's, you know, it does indeed come from ABC. If you're going to send me an article, don't just send me screenshots. Send me the link to the article because, you know, I, you know, these days you don't know. And they said that the word is from some police sources that Jonathan Majors is the one who called 911 because he was concerned about his girlfriend. So he called 911 and because uh, he felt she was having a, she was in emotional distress. And then when the sh police showed up, she said he, he slapped the crap out of me in the car last night. So you're like, this is really bad. But with all that stuff, you would think the DA would maybe not have charged. But the DA charged. The DA charged. And that is really surprising. That's like, wow. Uh, thanks, Talon. You know, so I mean, like, I'm surprised the DA still charged to the point where I'm like, mm, now I'm nervous again. So if I were Disney Marvel and just an individual, if Jonathan Majors wants this to go away, because people can recant and make statements all they want, but people online will always accuse people of being paid off. So if Jonathan Majors really wants to make this go away, he needs to release the recording of the 911 call that it should have his voice on there saying, I'm worried about my girlfriend. We hear 911 calls all the time. Uh, I'd be interested, how about the body cam footage? I'd be interested maybe, we could even go a little step further. I don't know if you saw me talking about it on Movie Math yesterday, but I was amazed at how much footage we were able to get from the Murdoch murder situation. Like we were able to be right there when they arrived on the crime scene. So let me see it. Let me see Jonathan Major's behavior. Is he worried about his girlfriend? And then when they say they're arresting you, is he like, that's nuts? Or are you, or, you know, let's see why the police made the call that they did. And then also that might be a bit far, but I would definitely want to hear the 911 call. And I definitely want to see the footage from the car, from the Uber Lyft or whatever. Uh, I mean, I'm, I don't think anyone's going to definitely believe the driver. The driver and the girlfriend can see, say whatever they want. No one's going to believe them. They're going to feel they were just paid off. So I feel I'd love to see the camera footage, the, 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 uh, the, the chest cam footage from the police. I'd love to see that, but that seems a little bit aggressive. And also, I don't know if this is evidence. So I don't know. If I were his agent, I'd leak it. I'd be like, oh, how'd that get out? Crazy. But because, you know, before this, people always see the first headline, but they rarely see the retraction. So... At the very least, I'd be like, where's the 911 call? I want that audio. And I want uh, the footage from the car where she said it happened. I was like, you got to show me this stuff. I want to see it. That's right about Antony Starmark. I'll add him to my list, which we're going to talk about in a minute. You know, we have to be very careful. It's very difficult to get involved in people's personal lives. I think that's a new trend that's happened with social media. We don't know what's going on. But it's very serious, the allegations. His girlfriend does have marks on herself, and she does have a laceration. So it's like, where did that come from? That's very concerning. So we need to know. I told you, Devin, if you put a super chat up, I'll try and go back and get it. But I, you got to let me cook. You got to let me cook on the stories. Uh, all right, so everybody was wondering what's going to happen with Kang. Is he going to continue to be Kang? Well, this is tough. This is supposedly a one-time incident, which, of course, is reprehensible and horrible, and he never should have done it if he did. But, you know, people have been accused of doing worse, and it seems to be a one-time thing. Uh, I think the Twitter account situation is alarming. The Twitter accusations are alarming. Uh, so people did bring up that they said it reminded them of what happened to Nate Parker. You might recall that Nate Parker did Birth of a Nation, and Birth of a Nation was a really tremendous film. Great movie. And Nate Parker was on his way to being a huge star. But then it resurfaced some, uh, that he'd been accused of something far more serious than what happened here. Very serious, you know, very serious charge. The most serious sexual assault charge you could get. And he'd actually been acquitted. But yet he was friends with the individual who was, who was found guilty. And it ruined his career. It was a very bad situation. And it had happened before he'd even made the movie that he'd made. But it came back up, couldn't get past it. And some people were comparing it. And uh, I think you do, I think Nate Parker, I'm not defending Nate Parker whatsoever. You know, that was really horrific. And it was a very bad situation. But what interests me is that people pointed out a disparity in how talent is treated based on their skin color. Now, this isn't, I would not compare this to Ezra Miller. 
Some people have said this is like Ezra Miller. I don't agree with that at all. The problem with Ezra Miller is that he decided to just completely, you know, cause a huge problem when the flash had already been filmed and was sitting in the can and cost over $100 million. That is the only reason that Warner Brothers is even trying to make this work. If they continue with Ezra Miller past The Flash, then we have a real problem. And I don't think, I don't think audiences would be supportive of that. But I think the issue is, um, is that Ezra, you know, was in a film that had already been completed and not been released, right? Like, that's the issue there. Like, what do you do? Oh, I guess if you were going to make this a similarity, like, what do you do about Loki season two, which is obviously going to be very Kang centric and Jonathan Majors has already filmed that. So what do you do about that? Also, I think that while Ezra has serious problems and, uh, I, well, yeah, I don't know why everybody's glossing over the fact that Ezra apparently has been accused of giving strong drug substances to a minor. I mean, that's really where it's a problem. You know, a lot of people talk about his, his rampage and then he got arrested and then he was like, um, you know, he was, at first it seemed like he was just acting out like someone who was having a mental breakdown. You know, that was like how the story started off at first. But the fact that he had a minor who lived with him and left their parents, I mean, even if the parents were initially okay with it, you're like, that's really bad. So I think that's why, but that's the, to me, that's why anybody is even, you know, the Ezra situation the Ezra situation is really bad. But then a lot of people talked about a number of white talent that has been accused of very similar things and have been perfectly fine. One of you just mentioned Anthony Starr, and I think the issue is, is that not many people know about the Anthony Starr situation. Uh, he got into a bar fight, very serious bar fight. I believe it was in Spain. And um, he almost went to jail, but instead paid a large fine. But it was very serious, very serious situation. Uh, Shia LaBeouf, although Shia LaBeouf doesn't work anymore. So I don't know, he did have repercussions for that situation. So there's that, Brad Pitt. Although, okay, so there are some situations where it's a little bit similar to this, where you're not quite sure what exactly went down because uh, the talent girlfriend or significant other, you know, stepped away from the allegations. For instance, Josh Brolin also had a problem with domestic abuse, but Diane, Diane Lane decided not to press charges. Brad Pitt was found innocent by, by the FBI, but there's still, some charge, there's still some chatter there as well. Jeremy Renner has been accused of some horrific things. Mark Wahlberg, that's right. Everybody, ta everybody talks about Mark Wahlberg all the time. Mark Wahlberg did something truly horrific and was found guilty and actually had to do jail time. You know, it was very, very bad. And everybody still talks to Mark Wahlberg. Sean Penn, the allegations of what he did to Madonna are also horrific. And so why do these guys get a pass? Uh, but Bill Murray's also not working. So Bill Murray's not working. Jared Leto, but Jared Leto, these are situations, you guys are talking about people who aren't working anymore. Louis C.K., not working. So that, they did not get passes. So you can't, you're miss, that's apples and oranges. But... The, I'd say Josh Brolin, Sean Penn, Jeremy Renner, Brad Pitt, you know, especially those because those uh, Emma Roberts, as Dylan keeps pointing out, um, Mar Mark Wahlberg is, I think, even worse because what he did was far worse than what Jonathan Majors is being accused of. Not to make light of what Jonathan Majors did, but what Mark Wahlberg did was uh, really horrible. So it's very, so I do think, you know, we have to be consistent. Oh, Casey Affleck, that's true, Casey Affleck as well. So we have to be consistent. I think the Casey Affleck, I don't think Casey Affleck was um, accused of, um, I don't know the Casey Affleck situation enough to get into that on, on a live without having looked into it. But, you know, these are, these are very, very complex situations. And, you know, we're not, lawyers, you know, we're not um, the police and we don't have evidence. James Franco was canceled though, Dancing Dog 60. James Franco also does not work. I'm talking about talent that still continues to work. And if those people are allowed to continue, why not Jonathan Majors? Like that to me is what is really the, the case here. Although I will say that every time now that Brad Pitt does a project, people bring up the accusations against him. And, um, if Jonathan Majors doesn't want this to be brought up by certain people, there's people who will bring this up forever. It'll never go away. 
if he doesn't release this tape. He has to like fully exonerate himself. Uh, and I think that, I hope that he, you know, if, 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 that, if the footage does exonerate him, I hope that he shares it. Because other way, otherwise it's just not going to go away. So, uh, and also there needs to be some clarification about these accusations against him. Uh, somebody needs to do an interview with somebody. You know, Jonathan Majors needs to sit down and do an interview, uh, you know, and just really be honest about it. Because I think he needs to explain what went down here exactly. And I think he also needs to explain these allegations against him on, on Twitter. Because uh, they're very serious. And, but, you know, also where are the, you know, these allegations on Twitter said that there were considerable um, it made it seem like there have been a number of people who Jonathan Majors has hurt over the years, like a lot. And it's like, where are all these people? None of them have stepped forward, which, so that's the thing. I think that we're at a point, you know, where I think that my feeling is everything should be investigated. I think it's extremely important to get to the bottom of it, but I don't want to make snap judgments on people anymore either. You know, like that's how I feel about it. I'm like, this is very troubling, Jonathan. And I'd like to give you a chance to explain it. That's how I feel. That's what I think. So I'll ask, let's do a poll. Let's do a poll. Let's do a poll about this, okay? And then I'll do questions while you guys vote. And I don't think this is exactly like Johnny Depp because I said before, Johnny Depp is not the sole person to blame in that situation. I feel that he and Amber Heard were equally to blame, but I think that they were both created a very toxic situation. Uh, but he seems to be a lot healthier now. I was happy to see a recent interview with him in England, and he seems to be in a better place. So good for him. Uh, situation. So, um, I, so you can say, I believe, no, I need to hear more. I've, I've changed how I feel about him. Uh, and then I believe he's innocent. Oh no, that's not, I believe he's innocent and I believe he's guilty. Those are the, that's it, there's three. We'll do, I believe he's guilty, and then I believe he's guilty of at least something. No, we'll do uh, too much smoke. That's why, because I don't have enough space to type it all out. All right, so you can vote in that while I ask you some questions. I'm not sure what would happen to him if he was found guilty of this. It would be very bad. If he was found guilty of these charges by the District Attorney of New York, his career would be over. I'll tell you that right now. All right, so let me go back here and get these things that I've missed. Oh my goodness, look at this. Oh, well, hey, Bartleby! Bartleby says, don't the contracts with actors that sign with big studios have clauses that allow the company to sue the actor if they act in a way that can ruin the brand of the film? Do studios ever come after talent? That's true. Or I guess they don't have to pay them. But it's too late at that point. It's true, Bartleby. They have started acting, adding those kinds of clauses to contracts. But I think that it's like the horse is already out of the barn after you close the door. They have to vet them. Emmanuel Rodriguez says, I heard that she recanted the accusations and the taxi driver and the footage prove his innocence. I hope people don't jump to conclusions and ruin uh, either people's lives. Yeah, that's true. But again, I think people aren't going to totally believe a recant recantation. Uh, they've got to show the footage. Welm says, I'm not making an excuse for Jonathan Majors, but the amount of muscle he built in four months is well insane. Do you think that steroids may have been involved in his behavior? I saw a couple of people discuss the, the problems of roid rage, and that's a, comp that's a complex situation. I mean, I don't know if he wants to go there. You know, we were just talking at the beginning of the stream about the pressures on actors and male actors in Hollywood to build themselves up. But I have not heard of any other incidences of that. And he claims this didn't even happen. 
So I can't speak to that because I don't even know exactly what we're dealing with. Uh, future movie actresses, hopefully the situation is resolved and Jonathan Majors can salvage things in the event he deserves to be. Due to Quantumania's low box office, he's still missing out on MTV's best villain, though. Well, I don't think, I think that's the least of his worries right now, future movie actor. Hey, A571, thanks for joining. Hey, Moonhead, thanks for joining. Dylan says, I saw Magazine Dreams at Sundance, and given what his character does in that story, I don't know how they can release the movie now if he's guilty. No spoilers, Dylan! Yeah. Disney's invested a lot of money in him, so why wouldn't they vet him? And then if these allegations did come out, they would be like, we've already looked into this, and we're confident in his story, at least the prior allegations. Obviously not this new situation. Trace Hancock says, I'm an attorney, and if the New York... Oh, that's great, Trace. Says, and if the New York District Attorney charged a public figure or something like this, the underlying evidence must be pretty convincing. I would agree, Trace. I also felt that way about him being arrested. Some people were arguing that he had to be arrested on the spot, but... I mean, I've heard some stories about the police going, bending over backwards to give people the benefit of the doubt. And so I would think they would give Jonathan Majors, this huge celebrity, the benefit of the doubt in a case. Because it's like they're not, they're not going to have trouble finding the guy if they need to. So I agree, Trace. The fact that they charged him is very concerning. Uh, Ryan uh, Deloney says, thanks for the nuance. Oh, it's my pleasure, Ryan. I want to be really responsible about this. I want to be fair to everybody you know, especially as the situation develops. Uh, thanks, Chamberlain. That's very generous of you. Josh Zeitler says, does this go against Disney's family-friendly branding? I think we need more. Well, they hired back James Gunn, didn't they? I forgot to put him on my list. I mean, James Gunn, I want to be clear, James Gunn never hurt anybody. That You know, um, James Gunn was guilty of making very poor, poor taste jokes. I don't know the I don't know the details of his relationship with Jenna Fisher. That's a whole other conversation, his first wife. Um, but he, he just did things that you would think would not mesh with a family-friendly brand. And yet he was brought back. So how do you not bring back Jonathan Majors? If, you know, it's difficult. Like, is this, and also, we don't even know if this is a one-time thing because of those Twitter allegations. But what's the source of the allegation? You know, why did no one else come forward after those allegations were made on Saturday night? And why has no one ever heard about this in Hollywood? You know, so many people have associated themselves with Jonathan Majors over a very long period of time. You know, it's been a couple of years. You, you would think that we would know this would happen by now. And again, I'm not doubting necessarily anybody's story, but where you can't just throw something like that in there and not hash it out. Hey, Mark Cioban. Zeno says, I usually catch these after the fact, but I had to join this one live. Ah, hooray! On the Jonathan Major story, very disconcerting, but I'll wait for all of it to unfold. Yeah, I, I really want to... The DA charging is very bad. Uh, Sean Artis says, if his lawyer is proclaiming his innocence, do you think there's legal tape they need to cut through to release the tape? They might. I don't know how a judge would feel about them releasing those things. It could be considered very bad to do that. Um, there's a chance a judge could get very angry with him. But I do have to say that at this point, it's so bad. And the longer this story stays the way it is, the worse it's going to get. And it'll just become cemented as part of his image to a lot of people. A lot of people don't do their due diligence. A lot of people don't follow up on a developing story. They just see the first horrible headline and they stick with it. So you know what would get people to watch? If they had the video of this. And everybody loves to watch video. So you'd be like, here, look at the video of my 911 call. Look at the video of the car where, where his girlfriend claims the incidents happened. So that's what you have to do. And I think he would, if I were him, if I were him and his legal team, I would just risk it because Jonathan Majors is being tried in two places right now, just like Johnny Depp was. Uh, he's being charged in the legal system in New York City, but he's also being charged in the court of public opinion. And to me, the court of public opinion is even more important if he wants to ever get hired again. Oh, hey, 50 Pence. You want a happy birthday in a robot voice? Happy birthday, 50 Pence. <laughs> I love that you guys love the robot voice. Uh, let's see here. Let me catch up there. Oh, that's right, Jeff Wilkerson. What about Russell Crowe? He hit someone in the head with a phone, like a cell phone, back when they were heavy. Well, they're really heavy now. It's very bad. Sean, oh, uh, let's see here. Mm-hmm. Dory Does Voices says it's customary to arrest a man in a domestic, domestic uh, dispute, even if they are unsure. 
Uh, maybe. <clears throat> With a celebrity? I don't know. I've heard of police coming and being like, we don't know, man. We don't know. Ah, uh, thanks, Jake. I'm glad you feel I would make a good lawyer. I don't know what's going on with Tiffany Haddish, Potterhead 7. That was bad, too. Will of Devon says, I relate this. I wouldn't relate it. I mean, Cosby is a thousand and ten, like as guilty as you can get. What Cosby did was absolutely horrific and disgusting. And I can't believe that he even thinks that he can come back from that. Uh, Marduk, it's more than strangulation. It's apparently a strangulation and a slap. You know, her story, her original story was is they would come back from some kind of club and Jonathan Majors had been talking to another woman and had given, they had exchanged phone numbers. And in the car ride back, um, his girlfriend was curious as to what he was, who he was texting and what he was texting. And she tried to grab his phone and that led to a physical altercation in the back of the car. That's what his girlfriend told the police that's her original story, which again, she has now recanted in writing. But that was the original story. Uh, and so it, the footage would be in that car. And the, everybody has driver cam footage now. So that needs to be released. Like yesterday. The dude says you're a lot harder on Cavill for a bad attitude. Well, no, I'm not. First of all, Cavill... I mean, I told you, the reason I'm in the middle here for Jonathan Majors is that I don't know for sure what happened yet. I know for sure about Cavill's attitude, and it's been proven again and again and again. I know some of you are Henry Cavill stands, and that's great. You know, I do think he's very appealing on camera, but there have been countless, countless examples at this point that prove what I have said is correct. And I'm not even that negative on Henry Cavill. I just say nobody wants to work with him. And I think he makes really stupid mistakes business-wise. And that's just consistently proven to be true. Uh, Vincent says, will this affect Jonathan Majors in the MCU? Um, I'm not sure. I think that they have to see what happens. I mean, if I were Disney, I'd be like, you need to show me that footage right now. If I, this more, today, I, Disney should be on the phone with his lawyer saying, I need to see everything that you have. And, and, then, and not statements. I need to see footage. Uh, let's see here. Franco, I don't know if we want to make comparisons like that. It's very serious. But I, um, oh, let's see here. Let's see what else is going on here. Lots of comments. Hold on, I'm trying to catch up. And then we'll move on to the next story in a moment. Yes, that's right, Ronnie. Release the tapes. Brian says, I love your videos. Keep going. So, oh, thank you. So strange seeing these people fumble these great opportunities that they're given. Yeah, I think at this point you need to act, you know, as if, you know, everything is going to, could be out in the general public. Hey, Emmanuel, being charged doesn't mean you're guilty. I would hope people have learned to not judge too quickly from previous cases. I think that's true, but considering how Jonathan Major's team had put forward the evidence on Sunday, it would seem like there would never be any charges because it was obviously already explained. But the fact that they still charged means it makes you feel like there's stuff that we don't know about. JLo 1972 says, all of the supposed exploratory evidence is hearsay. It is exactly what a lawyer would say to get the public to side with the accused, even if the tapes don't. That's right, JLo. That's right. Where I mean, like, prove there's a tape. That's very true, JLo. Fail to, fall two says, how would it look if Majors takes a plea to a minor charge? Well, his lawyer needs to have a very honest conversation with him, a private conversation as to whether or not he actually did it. So that's the, if he's innocent, he should never take a plea deal. But if it looks, if, he, if his lawyer feels that is, you know, he's at least culpable enough that, you know, it's, gray, it's a gray area, well then maybe they need to discuss the other discuss the other situation. Shlok, you can't send a super chat? You only get one a month, unless you know you're doing the other thing. Let's see here. Charlie says, the court of public opinion is heavily swayed by charm though. I don't know, I think it's down the middle. D. Brett Hansen says, what about the other stories coming out like from his college days? It's pretty bad. Again, that needs to be discussed. That needs to be addressed. Steam Music says, worry no one will investigate more and just brand him as guilty. I don't know about that. I think everybody's trying really hard to be fair here. And I hope they do that for everybody. I think that's important, you know? I think it's important to be like, this is serious. We need to look into it. 
But, you know, we need to be like a jury. Since we're a jury in the court of public opinion, we need to hear the evidence and we need to be, you know, open to, you know, however the story may play out, however the evidence plays out. And then you deliver a verdict. I think the problem is snap judgments. Okay, future movie actor, thank you for clarifying. And then Tyler says, in college, I walked in and my girlfriend trying to, oh, uh, I called the police. I'm sure it would have looked bad for me, but I'm waiting to, that's an interesting story, Tyler, and I'm sorry to hear about your girlfriend. I hope she got the help that she needed. Wandering Seth says, although it feels like there's too much smoke, it has all appeared a bit too suddenly. Usually, that's true. That's a good point as well, Wandering Seth. Usually there have been whispers for quite some time. Um, but, it, it, you know, Again, I don't want to go either. I don't want to go in either direction. I want to remain neutral until I see everything. You know, I'm like, I want to believe you. I want to believe you. And let's just, let's like put all our cards on the table and, and see what happens. Max says, unfortunately for Major's career, for sure. And overall, the case publicity feeds into the detrimental stereotype of uh, black male aggression. I, I do feel that it would be unfair if he was held to different standards than his white peers. It would be really a shame and, and not fair. Juan Carlos says, like the Smollett thing, everyone thought he was truly a victim of a hate crime until evidence showed up and flipped the story. Yeah, that's right. All right, just a few more things. Zachary Levi, he hasn't anything to do with this. Sam Robinson, yeah, that's very bad, Sam. And then Shelly says, all this talk about domestic violence. Yeah, it's very sad. Hey, Joe, it's a very difficult situation. Oh, look, Armina gifted some memberships. Hey, T-Movies. I'm just trying to get to all these last comments. Oh, Bartleby! Bartleby was generous yet again. Thanks, Bartleby. Uh, C. King. Davin Sten says, I want to know what the call from Feige was like. I bet they haven't called him if I wanted to. I mean, I think they've spoken to his agent. In a situation like this, I don't know if you'd speak to the talent directly at this case, at this, at this stage. Dorothy says, my husband works as family law evaluator, and we must ma wait for all the information to come out. I would agree. Wouldn't it be wonderful if the general public became more even-handed, right? You know, it's the pendulum effect. I would think that would be really, that would be a great thing to say. I mean, but let's see. Uh, I already says, I think we should treat people on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah, you know that it's a, you know, that's what I believe. I'm very much a, a believer in a meritocracy. Franco... I like, I love Henry Cavill on camera too. I think I like Henry Cavill a lot. Uh, Devin Henderson says, Disney can't catch a break lately. They're having a rough time. Let's see here. Let me get, um, Ma Mavith the Re Reaper says, I would like to know if they, have, if they have a couple, as a couple of history. And interesting, he called the cops on himself. Yeah, I would say if there was a 911 call where Jonathan Majors was on the call and instigated it and said he was concerned about his girlfriend, that would really help him. And I'm surprised that I've only seen that reported in one place. Green, lights, Green Lantern's Light says, as a person of color, I find it disheartening that most, if not all men, are guilty until proven innocent. Campaign deals have been lost without conviction versus placing those deals on hold. Um, we, it's very tricky, Green Lantern's Light, and I think that it's good that maybe we're reaching a point where we do wait to hear everything. Uh, hey, Jake Van Ness. Let me, do, let me close the poll, and then I got to move on to the next story. Okay. So the poll was, hold on, where'd it go? Come on in, poll. There we go. Okay. 65% need to hear more. Well, that's good. Wow, 12% believe he's guilty. That's scary for Jonathan Majors. I wouldn't have expected that to be second place. And 11% say too much smoke. What? Release those tapes immediately. Seeing that, I would leak those tapes right away. I am surprised by that. And only 10% of you believe that he's 100% innocent. Something is, I mean, to me, the sticking point is where did the injuries come from? That to me is why I'm like, well, she clearly has injuries, so... You know, how did that happen? Uh, that's bad. That's really bad. I'm surprised at that. Let's see what happens. But, you know, uh, you're on two fronts here. Those other 
actors are able to continue on, those other white actors, but I don't believe any of them had their cases publicized to the degree that Jonathan Majors has. Uh, so, you know, he's more popular, and so it's a bigger story when he gets arrested. That's very bad. They can't... Let me ask this. Okay, I have one more question. One more question. Because I'm so shocked by the poll results. Okay. Uh, how would you feel if they released the 911 tape and dash cam footage? Which showed he called and nothing happened in car. Uh, it's too many letters. Okay, there you go. If they released, okay. So I had to abbreviate it, okay? It said, I would be willing to move on. S still think it's suspicious. Okay, there's just the two. There you go. I'm very surprised at that, those results. So let's vote really quickly, and then we'll move on to the next story. What a tremendous amount of damage has been done to his career. I'm glad you're a member too, Moonhead. Yeah, Talon, those tweets were very concerning about those allegations against him. And they were from two different people. But why has no one else stepped forward? If everyone at Yale and the New York theater community has such a horrible opinion of him, where, you know, that's the other thing. Is uh, the New York Times or the New Yorker working on a piece on this? He, I mean, his, his agent needs to sit down and ask, his agent and lawyer need to ask him that. They need to be like, whoa, Jonathan, what's with these tweets? Is someone going to do a Ronan Farrow style report on you where I'm going to hear these stories in the next month, you know, within the next month? I mean, that, I've, I guarantee you a journalist is digging into that. I guarantee it. We could see a story as soon, now that I think about it, I'm surprised I didn't think of that. We could see a story about that as early as this week. That's so bad. My God. All right, how many votes are there? Oh, wow, we're almost at 2,000 votes already. Ah, uh, you guys are great. Okay, I'm going to end it so we can move on to the next story. Hold on. It's not good. Oh, no, hold on. All right, 73% of you would be willing to move on, but 26% still think it's suspicious. Yeah, his career is, is going to be stained forever. He's never going to totally get over this. Well, I think he wouldn't get fired from Marvel if those tapes were released. But he's never going to get away, get away. He's never going to get beyond this. So, and to think if that, if that, if he is innocent and if he called 911 himself, how sad that would be for him. If that was true. But that's just really... Phoenix Fires his first time making a live on break, but just wanted to say hi, Grace. I love your con. Ah, thank you. It's, I'm so glad you were able to make it today on the actual live. And then Sammy says those random Twitter accounts that then disappeared. Did they both disappear or oddly convenient? I think the herd situation all thought uh, we all thought to wait for more actual real evidence before making up our minds. I didn't know both of the accounts disappeared. It's bad though, because everybody just sees the original. So there will always be a small contingent, it seems, that never get past it. Hmm. All right, let's get on to the next story, all right? Because we've already been on this for 45 minutes, but it is a pretty crazy, it's a pretty crazy story. All right, then, this one seems small in comparison. Boop! Victoria Alonzo is threatening to sue Disney. I believe that all the statements that she made were just to get a bunch of money from Disney, and um, Puck News confirmed that this morning. Uh, before I was able to do this live. I was like, somebody wants to get paid out, paid a lot of money, and that's exactly what she's doing. Uh, but I think she's also completely torpedoed her reputation at the same time. Some people say she's trying to maybe build a brand to live off after she gets, like, you know, maybe she could pull an Amy Pascal. 
But who would want to work with Victoria Alonso after all of this? Nobody liked her in the VFX community. Uh, Kevin Feige wouldn't fight for her job. She violated her contract with Disney multiple times, despite them uh, trying to give her the benefit of the doubt, but she just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And now she's litigious. And, you know, she's hit them with a pretty serious accusation, which again, I don't think Disney's ever going to live down. So uh, I think she's getting a lot of money to live off of for the rest of her life. I'm sure she'll be able to find some area that she can be in, but it won't be on a large stage. All right, so let's go through this. So uh, the Friday before last, Victoria Alonso was fired. It came out of nowhere. She was fired without pay, and then she got no severance. They just said, hit the bricks while well, she quit uh, officially, but they told her to quit, and Kevin Feige did nothing to save her. Uh, on Monday, the story broke, and then by the end of the week, one week later, she had already lawyered up, and she was threatening Disney with a serious lawsuit, with her lawyer putting out a pretty serious statement saying that she was a Latina LGBT person, although a number of you have taken issue with her trying to be claim that she was Latina, because a lot of you don't feel that she is technically a person of color, so that's interesting. And they said that she was targeted and benched at Disney and silenced because she dared to speak up out against you know, Florida and the Don't Say Gay Bill and called Disney out for not responding to it. And she said she was silenced within the company. Uh, and then she said when she was asked to do something reprehensible by a Disney executive, they say it's not Bob Iger, but somebody else. And when she refused, she was forced to quit. That's what her uh, lawyer is saying. And you're like, reprehensible. Although I saw one person that I know from, <laughs> I saw some jokes, let's just say, within the VFX community, whether, wondering whether or not that reprehensible action was to approve MODOK. So what's interesting to me is that nobody is sympathetic to Victoria Alonso. You would think usually some group on the internet, and there's a lot of different groups on the internet, would rise to defend her and say, how dare Disney treat her this way? But not a single person is, def I haven't seen anyone defend Victoria Alonso. Not one. Nobody has defended Victoria Alonso. Because quite frankly, she, I think the worst thing was is she was just really bad at her job. But Disney chose not to fire her for that reason. That's not the reason that they gave. You would think that they would definitely just say, go watch Quantum Mania. And you can understand why we fired the head of our VFX, super, you know, our VFX supervisor. And also, look at all the horrible articles about how difficult she is to work with. Uh, so you're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. But it all boils down to this movie, Argentina, right? That was uh, an Oscar contender. So this is what Disney is saying the reason they fired her for. They're like, this is it. This is it. So Argentina 1985 an Amazon movie, as many of you know, okay? Yeah, Logan, this is some hot tea, hot tea, hot tea, hot tea. You better blow on it. Whew, so hot. All right, so you're, when you work at another company, when you work for, you know, if you, if you want to have the independence to do whatever that you want to do, don't work for somebody else. You know the age old thing. When you work for somebody else, all your ideas are theirs. If you're pulling down a steady paycheck, and you have an office on the lot, you're expected to work for them. You're their priority, they're, they're your priority, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But apparently, Victoria Alonso did not agree with this. Now, apparently, she's being accused of taking many personal days where she would, personal days, where she would not show up to work, and she would be working on her own projects. Uh, bye, Rob. And you're like, that's weird. How could you not show up to work multiple times and be working on non-Disney projects? You think she would have been fired immediately. So that was weird, right? So that's very bizarre. Uh, and apparently, Kevin Feige was starting to get upset with her, being like, why isn't Victoria in, in the office today? And did you see how bad uh, the VFX look? So she wasn't showing up to work as it is. Then she decided to produce this movie called Argentina 1985, and she didn't tell Disney about it, even though, um, uh, even though she had a clause in her contract that she can't work on a project for some other studio. You can only work on Disney things when you're working for Disney. And that, to me, makes sense. There will always be someone who says, how dare you re restrict my artistic liberties? But Disney says, we're paying you a salary. You have an office on the lot. You, have to you, know, you work for us. And if you don't want to work for us, you can quit and go and pursue your own projects. But... She then came and she said, hey, look, 
uh, I'm doing this movie and I didn't tell you about it. And so they said, all right. They rewrote her contract because she had been at Marvel for so long. And they were like, okay, you can still work here and you can still be a producer on this movie, but you can't promote it. And apparently Victoria Alonso said, F that, I'm doing it anyway. So she was doing interviews, she was doing red carpet, and she was at Oscar events promoting Argentina 1985 rather than the Marvel projects that were also competing for Oscars like Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And so they're like, oh, look, Victoria's here, but not for Disney. She's here for Argentina 1985, which is for a competing studio. So they're saying, and they apparently they warned her in writing several times over the course of the Oscar campaign that she was in violation of her contract, but she kept doing it. So they're arguing that that's why they fired her for breach of contract. Now, I would also add horrible at your job, but so anyway, they so she didn't get a payout. So now she came back with she got, she lawyered up with a very aggressive lawyer uh, in the Hollywood industry. And they threw this out there where they said she'd been asked to do something reprehensible. And I think immediately everybody was like, okay, I'll bite. What was it? Right? And you're like, and who asked you? And, and she better be able to prove it, by the way. Right? right? Like an email. Because again, I don't, think the, I don't think anybody's very sympathetic to Victoria Alonso, quite frankly. I haven't, again, I haven't seen anybody be sympathetic to her anywhere. Um, but it does look like Disney's decided they will just pay her off to, to stop this. But then why not pay her off at first? Why did we do all this? Like, I'm like, if we're going to pay her off anyway, why don't we pay her off on Friday when we fired her? Like, why did we have to get that horrible headline? I'd be like, we're forcing you to quit. Here's a huge amount of money. And you have to sign a non-disclosure agreement that you can't talk about us. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's what happened to Bob Chapik. You hear Bob Chapik talking to anybody? No. He took his tens of millions of dollars and went home. So I don't understand why they didn't do that. I mean, she must really be disliked over there. Um, and that might be true that Argentina 1985 wasn't an Amazon film at first, but it still wasn't a Disney film. You can't go and work on your own stuff when you're on the company's dime. You just can't do it. And I know that some people might feel that sucks, but, and then if, and that she did it before she even went to the company. Like, what you're supposed to do is say, I have an idea for an amazing documentary. Would Disney like to make it? Give them the right of first refusal. If you ever work for a studio, that's what you're supposed to do. And you might not get the best dollar, and it might not be best for you, but you won't get fired. <laughs> that's how it works. You know, you want your company to like you, or else stuff like this happens. Uh, so we'll see. But uh, the fact that absolutely nobody is defending her is, I think, pretty bad for her. But again, I don't understand why Disney allowed this to happen if they were going to pay her off anyway. If I fired her without a, without a non-disclosure and without a payoff package, I'd be like, I ain't doing it now either. I'd be like, let's do this. Let's air. I mean, I don't know. I don't know why Disney always, you know, they did this, you know, with Scarlett Johansson. They did this, although I think Scarlett Johansson was in the right. But it's like, if you guys are just going to cave, why do we have to go through all this? Like, just cave up front, because it's ridiculous. Like, I'd honestly go to the legal department, and I'd be like, are we going to fight this, or are we just going to cave? Because if we're just going to cave, let's just pay it now. All right, so that's the second story of the day, and we'll see how it goes. What I think is going to happen is Victoria Alonso is going to get paid. They're never going to put a pin, I mean, they're never going to resolve the reprehensible case. And it'll always just be out there hanging in the wind. Everybody will be like, remember what Victoria Alonso said about it being reprehensible? I wonder what that was. Smart Girl says, I'm at my new job and I'm batting for that team now, not the old one. It's how it works. That's right, Smart Girl. You're very smart. I like your picture. You look great. Let's see here. Any questions about this before we move on to the third story of the day? And then we still have the Q&A to go. What a stream. What a stream. Let's see here. Mika, Alonzo doesn't have CAA. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Scarlett Johansson is represented by CAA. But she has a, Alonzo has hired a real pit bull of an attorney. Haunted Autumn says, why cave indeed? That makes me wonder if there isn't some dirt she has on someone. Well, yeah, maybe they didn't know this person asked her to do it. They were like, gosh, darn it. Uh, and then also, I think they just want the bad headlines to stop. But then when they, th at this point, you should assume there are going to be bad headlines. That's why you march into the office and say, sign this non-disclosure agreement or I'm going to sue you into oblivion if you say anything. 
I already says normal people are getting fired for no reason and they can't afford aggressive lawyers. So she can try. Oh, that's an interesting point. I ready. Yeah. Those, those layoffs are going to start this week. It's going to be real bad. Jay King says, uh, after succession last night, I'm looking at all these stories with my business cap on. She was a blood sacrifice. Yeah. You got to be popular in the workplace, man. Kevin Feige was like, I don't know her. Let's see here. Shahar says Disney has been so sloppy since Chapik's reign. And I think even was a little bit before that, they should never have put him in position. As soon as he got the job, everybody was like, that's a mistake. It's weird to see so many things happen in every industry where the general public can instantly look at it and be like, that's a huge mistake. And they do it anyway. And yet they're making the millions of dollars. Steven says Iger is probably regretting coming back now. Oh, I don't think so, Steven. I think St he's making so much money. I think he's like the hitman. He's that's he's in he, Iger's in his hitman era. He's like, I'm just gonna take everybody out, man. Jake says, who's going to replace her? That's an interesting question. Maybe it shouldn't be one person. Hey Mariah fan. I love Mariah Carey too, if that's who you're referring to. That's right, Dane. It's a special super size stream today. Woohoo! Oh, uh, hey Gracie Gracie, and I'm glad you made it. Better late than never. Hey Shamar. Well, let's see here. Raul says, is Disney getting contaminated with the DC curse? Uh, well, I think it started over in, in, in Star Wars first. It was rough. It was rough. And then, oh, hey, Mommy needs a nap. Uh, it's nice to see you. I missed you. Uh, that's Michelle. Hey, Michelle. Props to Disney for a less aggressive public response. That's an Iger Chapik difference. Oh, and look at you coming in with the great comment. I love it. That's very true. You know, Bob Chapik would have been like, You're, I guess that's true. Bob Chapik would be like, I'll fight you all the way down. But I mean, I, there's still a little bit of chapik in there because they sh this should never have happened in the first place. I was disappointed in yesterday's succession and everybody got angry with me. They were like, it was great, Grace. I just felt I'd seen it before. I was like, whoop de doo another deal, whatever. Another everybody fighting stuff. And I didn't like what they did to Greg. I was like, Greg became a jerk. Disgusting brothers indeed. Uh... Marco says, I choose to believe that Modoc was the reprehensible thing. Yeah, maybe we'll all just get behind that. Noah says, can sympathize with her wanting to be a creative, but it seems like she didn't think this through at all. Like, what did she think was going to happen? I agree, Noah, especially when she got notified in writing. You'd be like, oh, this seems to have gotten pretty serious. Ah, uh, thanks, Porkchop, uh, Paul. I'm glad to see 621 is confirmed for, um, for uh, Secret Invasion. All right, let's move on to the next story of the day so we can get to the Q&A section. All right, hold on. Boom, baby. Oh, I looked, I covered up Captain America 4. All right, so right before we went live, it was confirmed by the Hollywood Reporter. You know, I'm getting, I'm getting torn on this stuff. I don't, I, don't, I, want, I don't want to continue having leaks spoil movies, but I guess that Liv Tyler would show up in the ad campaign, so I guess she would be fair game, right? She's not going to be a surprise that's like, who's this, Betty? But, you know, I really think it's important for these movies to, uh, to have surprises in them still. I think it's getting frustrating to know them, you know, basically scene for scene, and in some cases with quantum mania word for word before they even come out. Uh, Green Money says, uh, we usually fire someone who breaches contract, make sure they never work in the industry. Um, I see what you're saying. Okay. So, yeah. So, but today, I'm very happy that Liv Tyler was brought back because they brought back William Hurt, Right. It's like, you got to bring back Liv Tyler. And by the way, that's a current picture of her. How great does she look? She looks phenomenal. I'm so happy for her. So that's her from earlier this year at, I believe, a Stella McCartney event. She looks fabulous. And so she's returning. And darn you, Universal, darn you. The reason that Captain America 4 has turned into a Hulk movie is because they can't make Hulk movies still because of the deal they have with Universal. If they, they can't make any standalone Hulk movies. So they're just turning Captain America 4. If I were Universal, speaking of lawyers, I'd be like, if it quacks like a Hulk and walks like a Hulk and acts, you know, is it a Hulk movie? Uh, but they're like, no, it's called Captain America 4. I don't know what you're talking about. So yeah, so anyway, she's returning. Uh, and as I've been telling you, this is going to be a Hulk movie about the proliferation of Hulks. You saw She-Hulk's blood. It became like something that was very valuable and they were going after it. They totally messed that up in the show. They were all over the place. But, you know, the, her blood is going to be the key to the proliferation of Hulks. And one of those is going to be Red Hulk, a.k.a. President uh, Ross. He went from Secretary of State to President, and he'll now be played by Harrison Ford, which will be hilarious. 
But don't forget that, um, uh, hey, Tommy, uh, uh, we'll talk maybe about the Aristocats tomorrow. But this was a bigger story. And it fit. You know, it's, it's all Disney, actually. They're very busy over there. They have quite the empire. Uh, but, you know, uh, so it's about the proliferation of Hulks. The leader is back, right? You, I said that when they brought him back. When they brought back Tim Blake Nelson, I was like, you got to bring back uh, Liv Tyler. It's going to look awful if you don't bring her back. And they have, so that's wonderful. Uh, so you've got the leader, the proliferation of Hulks. You've got Red Hulk. I think now clearly Red She-Hulk will be coming. And I think if I were Tatiana Maslany, I hope that works out. I think Liv Tyler and Tatiana Maslany would get along great, quite frankly. That's Red She-Hulk there. You can see her there. She's got cool red streaks in her black hair. Liv Tyler would make a pretty great Red She-Hulk, to be honest with you. That's right, Mika. Ed Norton's like, everybody's back to this party but me. But they've never established a, a Betty Ross for Mark Ruffalo. So yeah, we're going to be doing all that. But then we're also going to be doing, I heard they were maybe thinking of putting Vibranium in there, Adamantium. So you're like, what's this movie about? And then also Super Soldiers, because Sabra, uh, is, uh, Israel's Super Soldier is being brought into the movie. And you're like, but isn't Thunderbolts now about Super Soldiers? Last I heard this movie was too crowded. So I wouldn't mind if they stripped away everything but making it a Hulk movie, basically. And, you know, for some reason, Sam Wilson's like in the middle of all this. <laughs> He's like, whoa, taste the rainbow, Sam. Uh, you know, speaking of Skittles, right, from Shazam 2. But it's going to be a rainbow of Hulks. Uh, by the way, I got some interesting information this weekend. Uh, I heard from, I was talking to someone I know in the industry, and they talked about the fact that, remember the great Marvel shows, the great Disney Plus Marvel shows in the beginning? Well, it turns out that for two, just two episodes of Falcon and Winter Soldier, Disney spent $50 million to make them. No wonder they look so good, and no wonder they don't look as good now, because clearly they've brought down the price on that. But that's incredible. They spent that much money on just two episodes. I was like, wow, wowie, wow, wow. It was worth it. You know, if nobody's watching this stuff, you know, that's pretty bad. Uh, but yeah, and, and Sebastian Stan's heading over to the Thunderbolts movie as well. So we'll see what happens here. Uh, and also don't forget that Betty Ross was already brought back for What If in the animated show. You know, they had her back. It wasn't voiced by Liv Tyler, but they already kind of hinted that she was going to be coming back anyway. Betty Ross, of course, is a fellow scientist as they've reimagined her for uh, the MCU. So maybe she helps bring about the red. Maybe she's working with the leader for General Ross for the United States Army's uh, Hulk program. I can see that. And she turns herself into a Hulk. I would love that. It would make me so happy. I think, I think President Hulk is a little ridiculous, to be honest with you. I think it's as stupid as the Statue of Liberty holding a Captain America shield. And I even like this stuff. So I can't imagine how non-comic book fans feel. But a Red She-Hulk is pretty exciting to me. Uh, let's see here. Logan says, after Star Wars, Rise of Skywalker, I'm worried about Harrison Ford in this role. Yeah, you better not phone it in. But I gotta tell you, he's pretty good on shrinking on Apple TV. And he's also very good on, um, what else? Uh, he looks pretty, he's pretty good in Indiana Jones. That's right, Tanner. I like Liv Tyler, too. She's a very nice person. We see says Universal needs to do something with the IP or let the MCU do it. They can't do something with the IP because Disney won't make a movie over there. So they're just stuck. But obviously they can't buy it back. Uh, Poke says, how, how much Sam, Captain, Sam will be the star for sure. And I have to tell you, I think this is a good way to make sure the movie is a success. I think it's, very, I'm very happy for Anthony Mackie that he gets to fight a bunch of Hulks. I think he's going to look great doing it. I think that otherwise his movie maybe would be a tougher sell. But I think, who wouldn't be excited about this? And I guess, you know, having the Red Hulk be the president kind of works because, you know, it's very, Captain Sam Wilson himself is very government oriented. So I think it's great. I'm happy to hear that, Denny. That's a sweet thing to say. All right, does anybody have any questions about this? And then we will move on to um, the Q&A. Future movie actresses thought maybe they'd recast with Michelle Monaghan, but so happy to see Liv Tyler back with Betty Ross. Excited to see her scenes with both Mark Ruffalo and Harrison Ford. I'm not sure if Mark Ruffalo is in this, although how could he not, right? Uh, but I'm very happy for her. And she's got to meet up with Hulk eventually. I think I'm pretty caught up here. Al Al Alon says, looks like all comic book movie actors need to control their anger before they hulk out. <laughs> uh, that's true to a degree. Let's see here. I'm not sure we're going to see Elijah Bradley again, Moonhead. 
Um, you know, I liked that character quite a bit in that in that story. But you know, uh, Eli Bradley, his grandson, of course, was one of the individuals involved in a very public fight at Walt Disney World. His family got into a fight with another family on camera. So that's, I think, been a little bit difficult to navigate. Elliot says, of all things, why, did, why do this to Anthony Mackie? Why, I think it's great. I think you won the MCU lottery, Elliot. I think this is fabulous. Um, Devin, I think I heard that She-Hulk would show up at least a little bit. Lord Baratheon says, Indiana 5 is premiering at the Cannes Film Festival in May. You think this shows that Disney is very confident in that movie. I hope so. It'll certainly make for a nice photo op. Brett, I'm glad you made the live stream. And then future movie actresses Harrison Ford was almost the villain in the fourth Mission Impossible. Be cool to see Tom Cruise and him still work together someday. Surprised they still haven't after all this time. That's interesting. Boy, Harrison Ford really wants to get paid, huh? Uh, Jake Chandler says the Captain America movies have been among the best. This is a mess. Another story taking over the Captain America brand. First Civil War. But that was great, though. And now all the Hulks are going to smash it to bits. I don't know. I really liked Civil War. That was a great movie. Nadia says, at this point, I think therapy and anger management should be offered to everyone. Well, that's interesting. Maybe if I were a, a, a talent agency, I would consider maybe having someone on, maybe creating that kind of a division for people to talk to. I do feel there's real value in getting uh, therapy. If you don't have someone to talk to in your, if you don't have somebody to talk to, I think there's real value in getting a professional to fill that role. Hey, Tammy. Thanks for the gifting five memberships. Travis says, man, Stephen uh, Yoon should be Amadeus Cho. Ah, uh, nope, he's going to be Sentry. But I have to say, uh, considering that he's in Beef, which is from that director who's doing Thunderbolts, the upcoming thing with, uh, uh, on Netflix, which looks really good, I'm kind of getting more into it. Drago says, hi, Grace. Do you think they need to give Sam the super soldier serum to go up against the Hulks? Yeah, I really would like him to have super soldier serum. I mean, they kind of made the wings work when he's flying around and throwing the shield. He looked pretty cool in the final episode of Falcon and Winter Soldier, but I, he really needs some super soldier serum. Although I feel he'd be categorically against it, but maybe when he's getting beat up, beat up by Hulk, he'll change his mind. Uh, Gico says, thoughts on Kingpin running for mayor in New York City. Right out of the comics, baby. I love it. But who knows when the hell that show's going to ever show up. They're shooting it right now, Daredevil. Um, Logan says, I feel like the MCU never fully closed what happened with Civil War, except that Tony died. Like, are the Sokovia Accords in effect still? Ah, uh, didn't they say they had kind of been repealed in Falcon and Winter Soldier? I thought I heard them being name-checked. Your little brother... Oh, let's go on to the Q&A. All right, let's go on to the regular Q&A. We'll do about 10 minutes. Oh, yeah, Q&A time. We'll go until 522. All right, so your little brother Gabriel says, with, uh, with early rumors of a mummy four, do you think they'd bring back Rachel Weitz? Well, she, you know, she famously said she hated those movies, and she didn't want to be in them anymore. So I'd be like, I don't know if I want her to come back, quite frankly. I don't like it when, it's like when Anne Hathaway bad, said bad stuff about The Princess Diaries, and Hilary Swank said bad stuff about 90210. Don't say negative stuff about the thing that put you on the map. You should always be grateful for that. Pork Chop Polly says, Red, Red She-Hulk versus Green She-Hulk. Ah, it would be amazing. I'd be so excited about it. I couldn't stand it. Let's see here. Shamar says, is that Princess and the Frog live action movie real? I haven't heard anything about it, but they're developing so many at this point. Let's see here. Uh, Chamberlain's excited for Sam versus the Hulk family. Me too. I think it's going to be great. Uh, da -da. Aaliyah. So Disney Plus, oh, that's good. You guys, I'm glad. I'm glad that Secret Invasion is June 21st. That's great. But awfully close to, um, I guess, I don't know. Is that near a Marvel movie? No, it's not near a Marvel movie now because they moved... Um, uh, Captain, Mar I mean, the Marvels. Mm -hmm. I like Sam. Who said that? Heather, I love Sam Wilson, too. I think he's a great character. He's such a nice guy. He's a great leader. He cares. He's so compassionate. Haunted Autumn says, oops, I fell. And the serum ended up in my arm. Maybe it'll be given to him against his will. That's be sad, though. 
Ricky says, Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves. Saw this on Sunday. Pretty good movie. I'm so glad you liked it. Yeah, it comes out this weekend, and there's another sneak preview on Wednesday night if you don't want to wait till Thursday to see it. What did Aaliyah say? Aaliyah said, I don't want him to have super soldier serum. Feel torn about that. Yeah, I mean, it's, t it's totally not what he stands for. But how is he going to do the fights? How is he going to do the fights? Shamar says, uh, you already asked that. Shamar already answered that. Steven says, with all the possible John Wick spinoffs they are talking, but I would love to see Halle Berry return. Do you think there's a chance that she could? That would be nice. You know? Uh, they make, 87 North just basically only makes John Wick ripoffs, though. Like, I saw a trailer. I saw it again on Sunday, and they had a trailer that looked pretty good for a movie called Sisu, which was basically like, finish John Wick. So I was like, you guys got to be careful. You're going to, you know, dilute this. Hey, Dane O'Leary. Dane says, what do you think of the season premiere of Yellow Jackets? I did not care for it, but I liked the first season so much that I hope it gets better. Same with Succession. Jewel Rodriguez. Hey, Jewel. What's Jewel saying? Jewel said, hold on, it skipped ahead. Why? Why, YouTube? Why do you do this to me? Where? Oh, I really skipped ahead. There we go. I just wanted to say that I appreciate your journalism. I hope they help Sam. Oh, thank you, Jewel. Because uh, we don't always agree, so I particularly appreciate that coming from you. I hope they help Sam be more fun. The banter with him and Bucky was good. Falcon Winter Soldier was, oh, you only gave it a 6 out of a 10? I really liked that show. It was very political, though, but I really liked it. Uh, I like Sam a lot. Uh, it would be good if he was a little more fun. He was having a rough time in that show. But let's see. He's a funny guy, though. Remember, he and, he and Cap have a lot of banter. Han Ban says, so many colors of Hulks, like Power Rangers. That's right. Hopefully with better VFX. Nick Dean says, what did you think of Gaga's, Lady Gaga's Harley mugshot? Oh, I tweeted about it. It was incredible. She looked so cool, I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. Daniel says, Grace, I'm dying to know what floor I'm on. I, oh, thank you. I'm glad you, hey, you're from Romania. I'm pretty high up here. I'm pretty high up. Let's see here. Recognize Jesse says, I love whenever you say I want to go to there. I say it all. Actually, I didn't come up with that. Tina Fey came up with that on 30 Rock, which her daughter actually said. The person who originally said it is Tina Fey's daughter who said it when she saw a picture of Disney World. She said, I want to go to there. And so Tina Fey said it on 30 Rock, and I thought it was hilarious. So now I like to say it, and I'm glad, I'm glad it spreads because it's a funny thing to say. Sion says, Alonzo should be replaced by Johnny Fabs. But he doesn't want to go and look at post-production shots. She was a post-production supervisor. So Johnny Fabs should definitely come back to Marvel, but I think in a different capacity. Jake says, what are the other Alonzo equivalents for other studios? They don't usually have it. There's usually a post-production supervisor, but I don't, you know, it's rare to have like one person do that for a division. 80s model says, Grace, what are your thoughts about Zachary Levi saying Kevin Feige said that his role in the MCU would be bigger from the Thor movies? And thank you for recommending Yellow Jackets. It's so good. Oh, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Yeah, the first season was incredible. And again, hopefully the second season gets better. But yeah, I saw that. I was like, boy, Zachary Levi just doesn't want to work anywhere, does he? Like, why say that now? Like, shoulda, woulda, coulda. Like, everybody in Hollywood doesn't have sob stories. It's a tough business. I mean, who would ever talk to Zachary Levi again without fear for it ending up all over his social media? Uh, you'll be like, uh, Zachary Levi will be like, this person took my sandwich at the cafeteria and was pretty upset about it. Ethan says, do you know if we'll get another Little Mermaid trailer? I don't think so. I, I would like to have one more trailer. I'd like to see some of the music. I think they need another trailer, quite frankly, to help the film to do well. So I would like to see one more. Maybe in front of um, Guardians of the Galaxy, right? you know, like a month before the movie comes out. AG68 says, is Hulk's son to be in the movie? I hope not. He looks awful. I did not like what they came up with at the end of She-Hulk. I was like, who's that supposed to be? I hope that is a mistake. Let's see here. Brent Hansen says, are you upset or mad? I'm not upset with you at all, Brent. I just haven't seen your comments. I'm not upset with you. I'm sorry it came across that way. Voice and Jack says, I'm watching Avatar 2 right now, and it should have been watched in theaters. It's pretty, ah. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, Voice and Jack, you know, don't feel bad about it. Uh, but now you know that when Avatar 3 comes out, you should see it in theaters. It is a good movie. It's much better than the first one, in my opinion. 
JM says, is Chloe Bennett returning as Quake? I believe that she is. I don't know exactly which property it is. It will be, but I would believe it would be Secret Wars if I had to guess. 50 Pence says, do you need anger management? What the heck? I do not need anger management. I have very good people that I can talk to in my life. I'm very lucky. Craig Logan says, hey, Grace, have you heard anything about Scream 7? Now, I haven't heard anything definitive except for the fact they're probably moving ahead with it. Big League Chew says, what are your thoughts on the season premiere of Succession? What made it weak for you? I just felt that I'd seen it all before. I'd seen these exact scenes and these exact conversations, and I was like, it just seemed like... My honest thought when I was watching it was I was like, you know, it is time for this show to end. I did like his conversation at that diner. I'm like, I think I know where that diner is, by the way. I've never seen it at night, but I think it's on Madison Avenue, and I was like, I got to go there. I've eaten it there like a long time ago, but I was like, it made me want to go there again. So I liked that conversation that he had, but I just felt overall, it just seemed like more of the same to me. As told by Alex says, isn't that similar to Jenna saying bad things about the Wednesday set? Well, but years later, I think that's part of the issue. Not to mention, I don't think a single person has been like, man, isn't it horrible that we didn't get more of Zachary Levi in the Thor movies? Like no one's been asking for that. No one feels there's a great injustice. Amr says, Amr Ahmed says, what is the last movie you went into not knowing anything about it beforehand? Well, I didn't know how John Wick was going to end, and you see how that went. I wasn't happy about that. Um, I don't know what to expect in Super Mario Brothers, which I'm seeing next week. The, uh, the review embargo lifts the day before. I think they're worried about the Chris Pratt situation. I think they're worried that the movie, it'll be taken out on the movie. Charlie says, just wanted to brag about seeing every Oscar nominated project in every category in the week leading up to it. A lengthy binge. They were pretty, <laughs> I'm sorry, Charlie, they were only pretty good. But that's great. You should be proud of that. You set your mind to do something and you did it. Ah, uh, thanks, David. I'm glad you like my glasses. Uh, William Wallace says, hi, Grace. Hope you're having a great day. Noticed you chuckle at my name, LOL. Wanted to say this is my real name. That's right, because it's Braveheart, William Wallace. And my nickname was Braveheart in college. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I love Braveheart. It's exactly like Spartacus. And so, and also uh, I feel bad about what happened with Mel Gibson because, you know, he turned out to be a really not a great person. Uh, but, you know, it's still a good movie. Uh, and then, although it takes tremendous creative liberties. Uh, and then I, I'm glad you're excited to see Dungeons and Dragons. It is a historical liberties, actually, but it's a fun movie. You're going to have a great time. Uh, Jose says, it's my day off from work today. I want to go see a movie at the movie theater. What movie should I watch? Oh, that's so nice. You know what? Go see John Wick. It's a long movie. Make sure you see it on a premium screen. It has really amazing action sequences, particularly the end. Uh, the last two thirds, I think, are really strong. Uh, and I think it's a three hour movie. It's a great thing to go and see for a matinee during the day. Uh, I think that would be a fun thing to do. That's what I would recommend that you go and see. Uh, Voice and Jack says Sam could serum himself into a fighter jet. That's pretty funny. Bobby says, I'm late. I'm so sorry I'm late. Uh, and if it's been asked, what are your thoughts on the new Lady Gaga picks? I think they look fabulous. I think they look great, uh, as I said. Uh, let's see here. Did I miss anything else there? Is Phil Dumphy coming back as Liv Tyler's ex? I don't know, Devin. Uh, that would be a deep cut. Hey, Garbage Girl says, Hey, Grace, thoughts on the 2009 animated Wonder Woman movie? Ah, I like your pink hair, by the way. I love that movie with Carrie Russell doing the voice. That was a great movie. Nathan Fillion with Steve Trevor, too, right, as I recall. Loved it. Totally agree. Fantastic movie. Tanner Madden says, Jonathan Major's situation, maybe Doom should be Secret Wars' villain. I can't picture Secret Wars without... Well, let's see what happens. It's a little too early to make any decisions about Jonathan Major's employment. But, you know, well, it'll happen quickly, though. It'll happen this week. Uh, I would say certainly by the end of April, they'll have made some decisions as to how to move forward. Max Beck says, coming back with the abstract questions. I know you don't like pets and are more of a Batman person, a, i.e. a realist, but if you could be reborn as an animal, no, I like being a human. So as Batman says, I just like being a, I like being a human. Leroy says, uh, hi, Grace. Is there any other movie channels that you enjoy to watch? Do you have any other YouTubers you are friends with in the industry? Well, we all kind of are familiar with each other. As for other YouTube channels I watch, I really like how it should have ended. And I did meet some of their creative team. That, I love their channel. I think it's great. I also like Pitch Meeting. I think that's pretty funny. 
Jake says, is it true that Sue and Reed were cast this week? I haven't heard, but let's see. Shadow Realm says, Grace, did you see the special message, special message of Ahmed Best? Really touching. Hope he has more to do in Mando season three. I did not see that. I'll go look it up. I'm very happy for him. And then Zach Burns says, thanks for this live, Grace. I can't imagine it's an easy one to do. Uh, and you're an absolute professional. I'm glad you think so. I want to be really careful. I want to be very, very careful. And Shahar says, any thoughts on Echo possibly being incorporated and recut into the 18 episodes of the Daredevil series? I agree. I think that would be a good idea. Because from what I heard of it, it's maybe good, but it's not a good use of our time. Hey, 80s model. Thanks for gifting five more memberships. Uh, David Kyle says, I feel the new Harley looks just like Gaga. She's going to be a great Harley. Although some Margot Robbie stands are hopping mad. Jake says, do you think they'll spin the major story <clears throat> as a toxic Hollywood roid rage situation if he's found guilty? Too early to tell, and I don't even know if that would work, but, you know... Maybe his PR team, I mean, I don't know. I don't think that would really work. Let's see here. <clears throat> All right, let me get uh, last few questions and then we'll do shout outs. Billy Zane for Lex Luthor says, not a question, just spreading awareness for Billy Zane is Lex Luthor. Uh, you're, you know, I have to say, you even have a little photo of him made up there. Uh, Billy Zane is lucky to have a fan like yourself. And then D. Brent Hansen says, Glo so glad to hear, just hard to get in touch with these days. Uh, get some chicken McNuggets on me. Ah, thanks, Brent. I was thinking of going to getting some McNuggets today. If it doesn't rain, I, I can't believe you thought you were, we're on the same wavelength. I was like, I might treat myself to some nugs. I might treat myself to some nugs. I will not be going to see Taylor Swift in concert, uh, although I do like her. Let's see here. All right, let me get to the next thing here. Do, do, do. Uh, Frosty Salt said, did you see that Keira Knightley said Elizabeth Swan was just an object of lust? I mean, what, is she doing the Zachary Levi? Come on. Uh, Ryan says, th I mean, again, nobody, nobody cares. Ryan Deloney says, thoughts on Maisel final season. It's very different. It's very hard to get used to, but it's incredible. I'm even, I'm even going to watch it probably again when it drops because I enjoy it so much. It's my comfort food. Britt says, hey, Grace, your live streams are always the highlight of my weeks. Ah, my question is, will the success of John Wick 4 transfer to Anna de Armas' ballerina? I don't know. I don't know if they can keep the franchise going, but Keanu Reeves and Chad Stahelski are done. Done, 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 done. All right, it's 4, 527? Oh, my goodness. I love talking to you guys so much. Quick shout-outs, quick shout-outs. Is it raining? I want nugs. Maybe it'll stop, Chad. Maybe it'll stop. Maybe it'll stop. It is kind of gloomy behind me. I'm concerned that it is raining. Do I want nugs that badly? I'll think about it. Oh, Heinz, shout out to you. You're turning 50. Happy birthday, Heinz. How exciting. <clears throat> I hope you're having a great day. RA says, what's your favorite movie of 2023 so far? Watching from the Philippines. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I have to think about it. Uh, Silver Scale says, nugs are worth it. They are. Uh, Fall 2 says, shout out from Philadelphia. Big water contamination issue here. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, uh, thanks, future movie actor. I'm making everybody want nugs. Ah, uh, chicken McNuggets are delicious, so delicious. Mm. Charlie Michael says, Grace, I got a new puppy a couple of months ago, but named him Gus after Saga. Oh, you did? I know exactly who you're talking about. Aw, your puppy sounds adorable. Chicken selects, David. What the heck? Uh, Katie, Katie Lady says, in Glendale, California, Keith is about to play Fall Guys. Let's see here. Chad says, here in New York City, watching it rain from my window. No, I'm afraid. Stop raining. Oh, uh, let's see here. Anna Kosal says, hi, Grace. I'm here in Indiana painting while I listen in on the live. Wow, what a, what a cool thing to be doing. Al Watch says, love you. Uh, I love you right back, Al Watch. I'm sorry I missed your super chat. You should have put it in here. Uh, Cole Morin says, I'm hearing charges were dropped. Have you seen anything new? Let's see. Mm, I don't see anything about his charges being dropped. We'll keep an eye on it. That would be great. But I don't see anything. I just see mean comments about my, my succession tweet. Whatever, man. Whatever. Let's see here. 
So Horace, I just came back from my eight day cruise in the Caribbean. Wow, and spent the day binging all of your videos from last week. Ah, thank you, I hope you had a good trip. Jiko says, getting my new Monster High Dolls hair a makeover. Oh, that's cool. Miguel says, hi Grace. Where'd that go? Where'd it go? Just saying, uh, fans found the designer on the socks Gaga was wearing on the set of Joker and it sold out in hours. That's impressive. I'm impressed if she had store-bought socks. Uh, can we do a favorite McDonald's order poll? All right, Max, we'll do a, a McDonald's poll to close it out. We'll do burger, chicken sandwich, chicken nugs or selects, and then fish sammy which is also delicious. I love the fish, Sammy. Not gonna lie, flay of fish. Haunted Autumn knows what I'm talking about. Uh, Mo, I'm sorry, I missed your super chat. I'll watch this. Grace, do you think Blue Beetle will be a billion, no way will it be a billion dollar movie. Although I hear the trailer is coming out very soon. They played it for some members of the press today, privately. Josh says, making healthy homemade protein ice cream and fresh sorbet. Ah, that sounds delicious. It's my pleasure, Josh. Uh, let's see here. Rashad says, at work in Vegas right now and mentally preparing to move. Oh, you're going to move, Rashad. That's a lot of work. Good luck. But exciting. Oh, Nabby, I'm sorry you're sick. Feel better. Alyssa, uh, I mean, uh, Jissa is playing some Pokemon. Noah says, saying hi from sunny Seattle, about to head to the gym. That's awesome. Let's see, anything else here? Look, I can't believe a burger is winning. Uh, Marco DeVecchi says, thoughts on Blue Beetle score leak? Serious Miles Morales vibes. The music sounds like Miles Morales? Noah says, saying hi from sunny Seattle, about to, oh, about to head to the gym. Kelsey, I hope you have a great day too. I'm glad you enjoyed today's live stream. Flashy G says, enjoying the sun on Vancouver Island, British Columbia. Awesome. Oh, look, Shahar is combining the burger with the nuggets. Interesting choice. Bobby says, thanks for the stream, Grace. I'm at LAX waiting for my flight to see my husband. Oh, he's been gone since January. Oh, I love LAX. Well, it's very kind of you to meet him at the airport. That's so sweet. I'm sure he'll really appreciate it. Talon says, eating curry before going out for my birthday in the village. Ah, that's awesome. Vault 2 hasn't eaten fast food in years. That's very healthy of you. I strive to be as healthy as you. Oh, let's see here. Sweet and sour sauce, Chad. What, CJ? I'm all about the ranch. All right, let's close this off and then I better get going. 42% for the burger. 42%. Can't believe it. Oh, 41%. It dropped at the last second. 41% for the burger, 35% chicken nugs or selects, uh, chicken sandwich, 16%, and the fish sammy way down there at six. That's funny. Poor fish sammy. A lot of birthdays today. Who else had a birthday? Mm -hmm. Mr. Magic is telekinetically vacuuming. Ah, I wish I had telekinesis. That is my superhero power of choice, as you might know. Uh, I don't see anybody else's birthday. I think I got everybody right. I don't want to miss someone's birthday, man. Okay, I think I got everybody. All right. Oh, one last comment there. I just saw the Luther movie last night. Idris Elba is amazing, but the movie was... Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That's too bad. That's too bad. Idris Elba just can't catch a break. Mig Miggy says they too have telekinetic vacuum called a Roomba. That's pretty funny, Miggy. That's pretty funny, Miggy. You're really on there, on the ball. All right, I better get going. I had an absolutely lovely time chatting with you, as always. And I plan to see you tomorrow for another live stream. It's going to be fun times. Uh, thank you to everybody who tuned in. If you're a member, awesome. If you're not a member, I'm so glad that you still enjoyed the conversation. And I hope someday you'll consider becoming a member. And if not, no worries. It's just great to have you here. And you can always leave a comment down below. All right, bye. Bye, everybody. Toodles.